good morning students today uh, we are going to discuss a new chapter intellectual awakening and socio political changes uh, this is chapter 4 from history so before uh, we move into the chapter i would like to take you all back to the ancient period so during ancient period particularly in a vedic period that is early vedic period and later vedic period we have seen that the society has transformed in a greater extent there came a new art of cultivation that is agriculture and because of that agriculture the cultivation the trade has flourished we could see the revival of trade and urbanization uh, during those periods so from the ancient period for example you can uh, think of about harappan civilization and in later and early vedic period also so particularly during the, this 6th century bc we could see a greater extent in trade and urbanization this agriculture uh, became the primary activity and because of the produce of crops and grains they started to sell those grains in the nearby markets and because of that there was a revival of trade and because of trade and the exchange of goods there was an urbanization which flourished during 6th century bc so during this period we could see a major a political and social changes that took place in india not only in india there were the greater changes all across the world for example you can think of iran and china and particularly in india at uh, during this period uh, two great persons buddha and mahavira were born they taught many philosophies they had a different uh, belief they started propagating a few ideas and beliefs and philosophies and after their death we could see uh, this uh, buddhism and jainism took as uh, a major religion in india so students i would like to say that uh, the new religions were coming up uh, uh, during this period during this period in 6th century bc when there is a revival of trade and urbanization uh, there was uh, a greater proliferation of new crafts uh, building cities and towns and rise of universalistic religion and the evolution of code of conduct my dear students because of this a very great revival and because of the characteristics that are proliferated of new crafts and growth of long distance trade we considered this 6th century bc as a period of exceptional development in all spheres of life such as material cultural and intellectual so what do you mean by intellectual it means that is something connected with a person's ability to think in a logic way and to understand things in tamil i could say that it is arivus arivus sarnda sindhanegal murporku sindhanegal so during this period there were a yeah, philosophical and religious thinkers and whose intellectual idea made a great historical importance philosophical and religious thinkers for example such as confucius in china zoroaster in iran mahavira and buddha in india gained popularity during the 6th century bc so my dear students before we look into this particular uh, religion confucianism i would like to take you back to the 6th century that there were two great thinkers in china particularly confucius and lao tse these two persons laid down systems of morals and social behavior for individuals and communities they have changed this community into a greater larger extent there was a great change in the political system and there was a great change in the social behavior of the society of the nation china and after their death 
you could see the people built temples in the memory of this confucius and lao tse and they taught their philosophies and ideas and belief this two part religion particularly this two religion that is confucianism and taoism exerted a very big influence not only on the political class of the china but also on the common people so when we speak about this confucianism this it was founded by confucius who was born in shantang province of china in 551 bc he was born when his father was 70 years old he studied history poetry philosophy and music he gained a great knowledge intellectual ability he gained and he gained an intellectual awakening ideas during those 6th century bc he was just as a man and he was made to work as a public servant because of his intellectual idea and because of his greater thinking and when we worked as a servant of a government sector he faced many difficulties and he was not even able to have a food he survived in such a kind of situations and in those times he has written uh, five important books that is a book of records the book of what is a book of changes the spring and atom annals and the book is a book of history so particularly in book of records he gave the guidelines for the regulation of the human society it means in which the human society have to behave, behave. he particularly emphasized i could say it in tamil that as he emphasized on manida neyathin olungu muraigal this book of records clearly gave a guidelines about how a human society have to behave when you speak about the book of what is it illustrates the sound principle of morality in songs so what do you mean by morality it is the principle concerning what is good or bad or right or wrong behavior so all the characteristics which are which is concerned that is what is good or bad or right and wrong has been illustrated in a song in a method of song in this book of what is so when you study about the book of what is we will understand what is the principles con- concerning about the human behavior and the next book is a book, book of changes that deals with a metaphysics what is metaphysics in the area of philosophy that deals with the nature of existence truth and knowledge so my dear students this book a uh, metaphysics uh, gave a greater idea it means valve unmai arivu aagiyavatrin tanmai kurithu pesapudiya mai porul thurai that is what the metaphysics is it speaks about the truth it speaks about the nature it speaks about the knowledge and the existence in a philosophical manner such a wonderful book that is the way in which we should live in and the way in which we should acquire knowledge and the next book that is about the spring and the atom annals it is a code of a political morality here the political system the way in which the political system has to be governed and all the principles that is regarding political system which is right or wrong or good or bad are given in this book that is spring and the atom annals a book of history which narrates the events and legends of the early religions of china it speaks about the old story that may or may not be true about the religion of china so these are the five wonderful books that gave a complete a philosophical thought in which a human society or a political society should function for a greater extent and he also spoke about five cardinal principles of confucius ethics humaniness manida bimanam we should be love and compassion and we should have a benevolence and humanity towards the society and next one is righteousness needy 
we should always have the quality of being morally right he spoke about this cardinal principles that is first one is humanness and righteousness the quality of being morally right propriety tani yurumai in which you can make your own decisions and think of it wisdom it is knowledge gnanam you should be more knowledgeable you should be in a position to judge what is right and what is good you should have the greater extent of knowledge so that the, this particular knowledge can change the entire human society when it is able to change the entire human society it has a capacity to change the political society the political system of a nation can change if you acquire a very good knowledge that is wisdom gnanam arivu trustworthiness nambagathanmai you should always have such kind of characteristics in which you believe on something else you trust the something else and you do the work according to the trustworthiness and these are the five cardinal principles of confucius ethics and my dear students confucius also said that wisdom grows from the family because it is the place where you learn the characteristics and the behavior and that is the place where i have been taught how to live in the society so the wisdom it means is the knowledge the ability to make a sensible decision that is what the wisdom is about so how could you sense that which is right and which is wrong and how could you make the judgments and all the judgments can be made because of a knowledge and because of the experience and that is wisdom the wisdom the ability to make sensible decisions grows from the family it is taught by the parents the way we should exist in this common society and the foundation of the society is disciplined individual in orderly family so what a wonderful line what a confucius has said my dear students he spoke wisdom grows from the family and the foundation of society is the disciplined individual and an, in an orderly family so if i have been brought up in a society which taught the good behaviorism and which taught me the good characteristics and obviously i will i uh, become one of the superior men and the next thing that confucius spoke is about the superior man when i i told you little bit earlier i could be the superior man it means we are the money then when i have been taught the very good knowledge of a wisdom and when i have a sensible knowledge to judge what is wrong and what is right and when i have a humanness and a wisdom and trustworthiness and righteousness i would really become an superior person but according to confucius the superior man is not merely intelligent or scholarly he said his character should be exemplary he should be an exemplary person munmadriyana manidanaga irukka vendum avan uyarnda manidanaga irukka vendum endral gnanamum arivum padippitranum vaindavanaga irupadu mattumalla avan oru munmadriyana tanmai gunam udaiyavanaga irukka vendum this is what the confucius is emphasizing here in this particular line so when he spoke about the superior person and the confucius has three virtues he said intelligence courage and good will and these are the three virtues of a superior man he said superior man cannot merely be intelligent or scholarly but he should be an exemplary person that it means he should be அந்த மனித உயர்ந்த மனிதனாக இருக்க வேண்டும் என்றால் ஒரு முன்மாதிரியான தன்மை உடைய மனிதனாக இருக்க வேண்டும் அதை அடைவது அடைவதற்கு யூ சுட் ஹாவ் த்ரீ குவாலிட்டிஸ் அண்ட் தோஸ் த்ரீ குவாலிட்டிஸ் ஆர் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் கரேஜ் அண்ட் குட் வில் தோ கன்ஃபியூசியஸ் இன்சிஸ்டட் ஆன் சில்ட்ரன் ஒபையிங் பேரண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஒய்ஃப் ஹர் ஹஸ்பண்ட் ஹி ஆல்சோ கிளியர்லி ப்ரொபஸ்ட் that when the command is wrong a son should resist his father and the minister should resist the prince see my dear students what a wonderful line it is it means that you should have a particular knowledge it means that you should have a very good wisdom and a righteousness to think that which the quality of a being is morally right and justiciable and the ability to do make a judgment because of the knowledge and experience so even the comment is wrong which is given by the parent either it might be the mother or the father and we should resist 
saying them that the instruction given by you is wrong so i cannot go on proceed with that instruction so such a kind of knowledge can be obtained only by the wisdom and even a minister should resist the prince when asked about the society he spoke this wonderful line and when asked about the government he said there are three requisites there are three uh, fundamentals there should be a sufficiency of food and sufficiency of military equipment and confidence of the people in the ruler so these are the three requisites that are needed for a very good functioning of a government we should always be sufficient in food and we should always be sufficient in military equipment to guard ourselves and we should the people should have the confidence of the ruler so uh, these are the wonderful codes or the principles or the ethics that were taught by confucius and even today this confucianism is being practiced in china see my dear students uh, this person had an intellectual awakening which led to the socio political changes and this is what the chapter is about he made a lot of changes in the political system he made a lot of changes in the human society and community of his society he taught how a person has to be how one should become a superior person and all his ideologies or philosophies and his beliefs were even being practiced today in china and the next person in china whose philosophy later become a religion and whose thoughts were later uh, became a book of texts and that is taoism lao tse was born in 1604 and he was 53 years older than confucius he is a pre confucius philosopher he was uh, uh, elder than confucius 53 years older than confucius pre confucius philosopher disgusted so what do you mean by disgusted and intrigued so what do you mean by intrigued it means this is what this is what which made him to move away from the china and he led a peaceful life so what do you mean by disgusted it means not liking he does not like intrigues the situations which were existing in that particular time when he was uh, 20 30 years old because of in tamil i could say arasil sulchigalinal verupadaindu he left the china to live in a peaceful abode to live in a peaceful place he then disappeared from the place and no one knew where he died but you see my dear students he has written a, a book in two parts containing more than 5000 words and that book is tao teng ching which is a guide to the conduct of life so what do you mean by the guide to the conduct of life it means he prescribes the way he writes in this book tao te ching in which the people have to live so when we speak about the teachings of taoism it means the teachings of lao tse he said and the cause of human unhappiness in the world is human selfishness manidhinudaiya suyanalam dhan manidhinudaiya sogathirkku kaaranam so what causes that selfishness it is nothing but the desire <coughs> selfishness creates unlimited human desires it means aasai manidhargaludaiya aasai endrum drupti padutha mudiyadathu so and the ஆசையின் காரணமாக வரக்கூடிய அந்த சுயநலம் மனிதனுடைய வாழ்வில் சோகத்தை இட்டு கொண்டிருக்கிறது ஸோ வாட் ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் லைன் இட் இஸ் ஹீ ஸ்பீக்ஸ் தீஸ் ஆர் தி டீச்சிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் தாவரிசம் ஹீ செட் தி செல்ஃபிஸ்னஸ் இஸ் ஓன்லி தி காஸ் ஆஃப் மிசரி இட் இஸ் ஓன்லி தி காஸ் ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் அன்ஹாப்பினஸ் 
and he wanted us to correspond with the nature and the human contact must always correspond with the nature he spoke all things act in natural way but we humans we should also have the contact that correspond with the nature so that we can have a unhappy we cannot lead an unhappiness life so when we correspond to the nature or when we act according to the nature obviously my dear students we will have a peaceful life and our characters and our behavior and our ideological thought will lead to a greater extent so humans live a life under regulation of someone is yes, absolutely my dear students because i am governed by someone else my teacher teaches me this is because i acquire knowledge i acquire knowledge i am under the regulation of someone this is because they have acquired knowledge and you have not remained innocent i have not done nothing wrong on the basis of acquired knowledge they have built up an urban civilization and have made themselves an unhappy yes absolutely my dear students i am always under regulation of someone to acquire knowledge i and i am not doing anything wrong not having done wrong but on the basis of acquired knowledge i want myself to develop in a greater extent so when i see a greater development i change everything i change this rural area into urban area and which made themselves unhappy zoroastrianism the next is zoroastrianism so the next religion that we are going to discuss is about zoroastrianism which existed in era this zoroastrianism is one of the oldest of the revealed world religions it remained as a state religion of three great iran empires which flourished from the 6th century bc it dominated in the middle east it dominated for the three great iran empires zoroaster of persia is the founder of this religion zoroaster even it is in practice today zoroaster of persia is the founder of zoroastrianism zoroaster was pain to find his people worshiping primitive deities you could see many people uh, uh, practice worshiping uh, primitive deities and they even worship the nature and he revolted against it and proclaimed to the world that there is one god the lord of light ahura mazda this is the intellectual idea which zoroaster proclaimed to the world that he proclaimed that there is a one god known as ahura mazda the lord of the light and the holy book of this particular religion zoroastrianism is zend avastha so zend avastha is a book which consists of a collection of sacred literatures of a different epochs containing religious hymns invocations prayers law myths and sacred reminiscences so when you speak about this uh, zoroastrianism it, it has much similar to those of vedas that is rigveda ajurveda ayurveda so all the doctrines and the practices of a particular religion have similarity to uh, vedas and what zoroaster needs to tell to the world what is his teaching and zoroaster thought that the great object of a religion is and the society is the cultivation of morality so what do you mean by morality as i told you earlier it is a principle concerning principle concerning what is good and bad or right and wrong and this is what the zoroaster's uh, uh, teaching is he asserted uh, seven qualities he spoke about seven qualities light the good mind the presence of mind the ability we do think a right the right action that we do dominion pity well being and immorality and he also told that al masura is omniscient the light 
is present everywhere the lord of light is present everywhere is all powerful and knows everything that is what we see is here omniscient knows everything omnipotent all powerful omnipresent he is everywhere and the principal teaching in zoroastrianism is that sacrifice and image worship were discarded and since we say that this lord of light this fire was worshiped as a symbol of deity and considered the highest form of worship so sacrifice and image worship was totally discarded in zoroastrianism charity to the poor service to the poor was emphasized in this particular religion zoroastrianism so my dear students so this part of the chapter 4 religion in the 6th century bc i uh, gave us a lot of intellectual awakening ideas which changed the social and political changes we have seen that how we changed the life of the people into a greater extent and how the ideology and philosophy played a vital role in changing the political system of a nation so with this we are completing the part 1 thank you students